there's no doubt Alexander loved killing. His favourite daily pursuit is hunting. And here we're talking about real hunting. He goes in alone, unarmoured, against the lions. Gosh, heavens, can you imagine this? It's just to keep fit for the days when he's attacking men. But behind this bloodthirsty killer is a cunning mind. Alexander, like any modern-day politician, understands the importance of image and publicity. He is determined to become a legend in his own time. On the campaign, he brings along his own personal historian and paid spin doctor, Callisthenes. Callisthenes' role in Alexander's campaign was to act as the, the publicity agent the, the official PR representative. And it seems fairly clear that as Alexander marched along, what Callisthenes was doing was, uh, was sort of uh, pounding out these, these reports from the front. So he was kind of like the embedded journalist um, for, for Alexander's campaign. After the Battle of Issus, Alexander and his army advanced down the coast of modern-day Lebanon. Most cities surrender, but the island of Tyre resists. Alexander's attitude toward defiance was either join me or die. Alexander begins what would become the longest and most brutal siege of his campaign. After seven grueling months, when the walls are finally breached, 7,000 Tyrians are killed and 30,000 enslaved. To prove a point to other cities that might resist, he has 2,000 Tyrian fighters crucified. When he was finished, he allowed the bloodlust of his men to run loose and killed every, virtually every male inhabitant of the, of the fortress. Um, it, was, it was an awful display of, of brutality, but it was also very effective in showing to any other potential enemies what could happen if they resisted. In another savage siege, this time at Gaza, Alexander's army kills every man in the city. From a military perspective, he did everything right, or nearly everything. And there's, there's so much to emulate in his generalship. But there was a dark side to Alexander as well. And he was brutal, and he fought for glory. And many of the things that we would consider the, the worst traits of humanity were manifest in Alexander as well. Alexander is merciful if his enemies surrender, but cruel if he is opposed. The governor of Gaza, Batis, is defiant to the bitter end. Alexander reveals his cruel side when he punishes Batis. He has him tied with rope, dragged around the city until he dies. It is a familiar scene taken from the pages of Homer's Iliad. Achilles has his arch-rival Hector dragged around the walls of Troy. But in that version, Hector was already dead. Alexander was brutal. He refined the art of brutality to the highest level. And that is what created his success in many cases. He could not have conquered the way he did had he not resorted to brutal tactics. With a string of savage victories under his belt, Alexander is ready to take on Egypt, one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen. The Egyptian pharaohs were seen as living gods and built massive pyramids, temples and monuments as testaments to their glory. If the Greeks were dazzled by Egyptian culture, Alexander was even more impressed and obsessed by the notion that a great ruler could also be a god. After two years of warfare, Alexander marches inland to Memphis. The Egyptians are eager to see their Persian rulers defeated. 
They surrender without a fight and welcome Alexander with open arms.